Mike Pacelli here. Thanks for tuning in. I'll be talking about the Beatles recording of I've Got a Feeling that they did on January 30th, 1969. Initially, it was two separate songs that John and Paul had written, and uh, they fit it together nicely. John wrote a song called Everybody Had a Hard Year that he probably wrote in December of 68, uh, because he sings a bit of it in his movie uh, Rape Film Number no. 6. And 68 was a bad year for John because uh, he was addicted to heroin. He had been uh, arrested for cannabis uh, possession, and Yoko had a miscarriage. Um, Paul had a song called Feeling, and that was probably inspired by him meeting Linda. So December 8th of 68, they're at Paul's house, and they merged the two songs together. And that was maybe the first time since, uh, I guess, Baby or a Rich Man or, or Birthday, depending on what you read, uh, where they had an equal collaboration on the song. So they, they go to Twickenham Film uh, Studios to rehearse on January 2nd, 1969, and that's the first time they show th uh, the song to George and Ringo. They play it 20 times that day. January 3rd, next day, they're at Twickenham again, and um, they play the song six more times. Uh, that's when Paul asked John to sing harmony on the bridge. Now, Paul's singing a full-voiced B, so John's part would have to be a full-voiced uh, G-sharp, and John says, just too high, you do the bridge alone, just scream it and have fun. January 6th at rehearsal, they, uh, they do three more versions of I've Got a Feeling, and that's the day where uh, George and Paul have a little problem, and uh, we've all seen that famous quote where George says, oh, well, I don't mind, I'll play, you know, whatever it is you want me to play, I won't play at all if you don't want me to play, whatever it is that pleases you, I'll do it. <laughs> January 7th, they, they're rehearsing again. They do the song six more times, and that's the day they add the oh yeahs into the song. January 8th, they rehearse it two more times, and one of those was uh, used in the Let It Be film. January 9th, they play it together five times, and that's when Paul's explaining to George how he wants that, uh, that uh, lick to occur after the, uh, the uh, bridge, where he wants it to fall and no noticeable jumps, just to sound like it's crying or falling. January 10th, George quits the group <laughs> after lunch. Uh, January 21st, luckily George is back in the band, and uh, they're now at the, uh, in the basement of Apple headquarters, and they play the song four times. January 22nd, Billy Preston joins the rehearsals. That day they play the song 29 times, and they made some proper recordings of the song. January 27th, rehearsing, they play the song nine times. Again, they recorded it. 28th, they played the song 17 times, recorded some of them. And uh, January 29th, they play the song one more time. Why I say that is because that's a total of playing the song in its entirety 102 times. <laughs> How many bands do you know rehearse a song 102 times before they play it live? And of course, on January 30th, there they do the rooftop uh, lunchtime performance, and they play the song twice. Now, February 5th, Glenn Johns mixes both versions to try to, they're trying to see which one they're going to use for the record. But uh, then on March 13th, uh, Glenn makes a new mix from the January 22nd session. He, he's at Olympic Studios uh, making these. And he, uh, but that one had no ending, so he, he splices it on with a version from January 27th, and they think that's the one they're going to use. But Phil Spector gets hired to uh, prepare the soundtrack for the Let It Be film, and Phil uses uh, one of the recordings from January 28th and both versions of the rooftop session and puts it all together to, <laughs> for another mix of it that they think they're going to use. But they end up using the version one from the rooftop uh, concert for the Let It Be album. So that's what I'll be teaching. And of course, it was released uh, in May 1970 on the Beatles' Let It Be album. So that's the backstory. Let's get started. John Lennon is playing his Epiphone Casino through a twin reverb. I'm playing mine through a 1967 Fender Deluxe reverb. But I've got it cranked to the point of speaker uh, breakup. Now that iconic uh, uh, riff that he plays over and over again is, is fairly simple. But if you want to get it just right, let me, let me show you what he does. It's based on two chords. It's based on an A chord voice like this. And a D over an A voice like this. But to get it just right, you have to uh, pay close attention to his picking technique. Now, it starts off, he plays a root fifth of that A chord, then he up picks an A note, and up picks a A and a C sharp. So you got 
Then you hammer on an E to an F sharp to a D to an F sharp. And finishing off kind of like the D chord, but playing the A and a D up and down stroke on an A. So the very first measure. If you want to get it just right, that last eighth note is always on, the, on, on a down stroke, which is difficult to do sometimes. But again, slowly it's. And in the second measure, the only difference is instead of playing a single A on the last eighth note, he plays a, a D and an A. So the second measure is. And again, to get it just right, that feel, the way John naturally feels it, you go down, up, up, down, down, up, down, up, down. But of course, Lennon isn't thinking about that. He's just, you know, plodding through it. But that's exactly how he did it. And sometimes he hits, you know, different variations of, of the chords. Um, if you want to get it precisely like he played, I wrote it out every single measure and you can download it at MikeBicelli.com. But when, you know, when he's playing a song, he's just, he's just loosely going through it, you know. But again, I think of note is that last eighth note, you know, is always down. So down on the last eighth note and down on the, on the, uh, on one. And the only variation really in the verse is at the very end before he goes into the next part, I'll show you, is some open strings that he plays, typical Lennon, before he gets to the next part. So he plays on the very last measure of the first verse he plays. Um, you hear those open strings again. And he goes into the next part, which um, I'll call it an A7. Because it's it's a, a a G and a and a, a E with an A bass kind of that sound. So just to play a G, an open G, and an E, and you it's uh, uh, eighth note triplets, and you slide into each one, picking them down. So like, got that? Then three chords, an E chord. A G and his uh, banjo D. I, I I usually play a G chord, you know, but John gets it with his thumb. If you want to be authentic, get that with your thumb, and then back to the the uh, main riff. Now, now on verse two, John is singing harmony, so he's not playing that uh, the riff. Precisely. He's more just thinking between an A like that and a D like that. And the variations in rhythm on this part are, uh, for the most part, it's like one and two, a three E and four, one and two E, a three and four and. Slowly that would be, um, let's see. And again, sometimes he hits the high A on the uh, E string, uh, like, um, but sometimes not. Again, I wrote it out exact, exact de monde, uh, uh, charts and tabs at MikeBicelli.com. And back to that A7 kind of a thing, you know. I've got a feeling. Now on the bridge, um, he's, he's just playing 16th notes and he's muting with his palm. Right, right below the bridge, uh, in front of the bridge, actually. So you play like an E chord and just in 16th notes. To a G, just the low strings, first uh, three low strings. Then when he, when he plays a D, he doesn't play his banjo chord. He plays just mutes it. And plays an A. So that's all that's happening in that part. And then George does that uh, falling lick. Uh, verse three, again, just played loosely. Just loose, it's just strumming. I don't think he's thinking about actually uh, doing the riff perfectly. It's just, you know, free playing. Like that. Comes back to that A7 thing again. Okay, and then... Uh, after that part, he's just just very loose strumming, almost just uh, in kind of in eighth notes, really, just kind of like. Or back 
to again. Um, oh, now it changes, that's right. Now he changes, he's moving that lick that he played up here to the second fret and going chromatic up. Now the way I see that is like, it's kind of like the way, a, a, the, a backwards turnaround for a blues. Because if you're in the key of A and you play a blues and you come down from the five chord, right, you're gonna play. But John is doing it up, so he starts the same kind of just E and a C sharp up chromatic to here. So it's like, um, um, <clears throat> got that? I'll do that really slow. Now, when he gets to this part, uh, he messes up. He makes a mistake, which uh, they left in. And uh, if you watch the live rooftop, you can see they kind of laugh at each other. But when he plays the, the main riff, instead of going... He's playing... You hear a, a uh, D sharp, so he's playing like... gives out a big woo, you know, because it's it's obviously a, a, a screw up that they left in there. Um, back to just free strumming. And then at the very end, he's doing that, uh, that chromatic thing, that kind of uh, seven sounding thing, and he goes up and he goes down, and he goes up and down, so it starts on the second fret again, and it's like... Um, slides in. That's the end. Just really fun, loose playing. I mean, don't get too hung up on playing it perfectly. You know, just have a good time with it. But again, if you want to know precisely what John Lennon did on every single measure, download the chart and tabs at MikePacelli.com. George Harrison is playing his Fender Telecaster on I've Got a Feeling through a twin reverb. I'm playing mine through uh, my Fender Deluxe reverb. Uh, I got a little more cranked and a little more treble on it to try to get the same kind of a tone. Now, George doesn't play for the first 10 measures, but when he comes in, he does the exact same little A7 thingy that, uh, that uh, John Lennon does uh, in uh, eighth note triplets like this. <laughs> And then he plays uh, a, a run-up. Now what that little run-up is an E, F sharp, G, A, A sharp, B, C, C sharp, and D. And then he has a little signature kind of uh, uh, riffs that he's playing. Uh, uh, after that, and it's kind of just an A triad, way up here on the uh, 12th and 14th fret, to another A triad on the, uh, what is it, uh, ninth fret, and then he plays a, a D, which is a voice like this, and suspends it. So the figures are one. Now he plays that figure a whole lot during the song. Sometimes it's three notes. Sometimes you hear that high D on the E string, sometimes you don't. Sometimes you just hear just two notes. Sometimes you hear and kind of a D suspended. So, you know, let your ear be the judge on the record and or uh, check out my charts and tabs and you'll, I wrote it out exactly how he played it every time. On the verses, it's a little difficult to write out and feel because every one of them is kind of different, but basically it's going between an A chord and a D chord. But the way George does it, he plays his A chord. Sometimes he just plays two notes of the D here on the seventh fret of the D and G string. Sometimes he gets those two notes on the uh, G and B string. And there's a lot of different figures. Uh, sometimes it's like one and and four. And then play that in time. So one. <laughs> like
like that. But again, he's pretty much muting it, so so uh, you know you have to kind of mute and play. And he plays occasional you know, single notes. So a verse might sound something like this. But it's, it's, that was pretty strict. It's it's just loose. So it's just, you know, go between the A chord and a D of your choice, either on the uh, a D and G string or the, the uh, a G and B string. And then back to that A7 thing. <clears throat> and, uh, oh, the second time he does these, he plays on the I've got a feeling. He plays, he plays it normally. <clears throat> In the second one, he just plays the third and fifth of A up to the. Okay. And on the bridge, he plays some cool little fills. Uh, he starts on uh, beat two of the bridge and he bends up the 15th fret of the B string to get a unison uh, E uh, on the 12th fret, like, you know, one. And then, you know, just beats the living daylights out of it. One. Releasing it, so one. Then he's going to play on the uh, 12th fret of the G and B strings, bends that up, you know, rock and rollish. One. Uh, then uh, a unison D by bending the uh, 13th fret of the B string and and fingering the 10th fret of the E. So it's like one, one. All right. So the whole bridge is one. And then that bend. Let me talk for a moment about that iconic uh, lick that George plays after the bridge. Paul wanted it to sound like, you know, something was falling. He didn't want any distinguishable notes, uh, like maybe the sound of crying as he described it. And George does a good job. But there sort of are distinguishable notes. Um, he bends up uh, a whole step, and then he gives it a little extra tweak, almost, almost to a half step. So it's like... <laughs> So if you want to think about it very strictly, it's almost like first it's an E and then an F and then down. So you know if you if you wrote it out really really you know strictly, it would be you know. And on that C to A, he kind of flubs the C, but nevertheless. So again, when you play that first bend up, you know, on the uh, the G string seventh fret, bend it up a whole step, and then give it a little extra. There's so many ways you can do it, and you can never do it perfectly like George because those little spaces in between are, are so, you know, minuscule. And George has, like, a, a, his, a, his vibrato going. He's, he's shaking. You know, he's... <laughs> Something like that. Again, up a whole step. Then give it a little extra. You might want to shake your neck to get the, the vibrato. Or just do it with your hand. <laughs> Into verse 3, he plays a low note. Again, A's to a, a, a D suspended. <clears throat> Sometimes little notes. Very, very loosely. Mm. He does a nice little. Mm. <laughs> you know, just loose between A and and the the D and suspension. And then on the page three of my chart, take a look at it here. Ah, we're back to. Main riff. Now you can tell he gets a little, he, he, he mellows it out and plays these licks under verse four. Maybe, you know, tuning the volume down and playing, um, playing just softly. Mm -hmm. 
like that. Mm. Does it four times. On the fifth time, he plays like an A7. Right? The suspension. Um, you know. And then right before he's gonna play some fills, he he he's very strong. He, you know. And then he plays some some really nice, sweet little fills. And let me play the whole thing for you. It goes like one. Okay? Let me do those really slow for you, it might help. Just like this. One. Okay, and then on the uh, the A7 thing, he's playing an A7 like this. Three note A7 and, and chromatically down. Um, and, and sliding into it, yeah. To a regular A. Got that? And that's where John kind of messes up. First time. All right, and then on the way out, he's playing some nice little fills again. After that part, he plays plays these fills. He plays, um, uh, let's see, three, four. Charts and tabs at mikepicelli.com if you want to get those exactly right. And uh, for the, the last part, he's just pretty much uh, muting and kind of, you know, chugging along and playing, um, you know, just between an A and a D on, on beats two and four. Very staccato, like one, three times. And then on the fourth measure, stronger. Now on this last bit, George is lost momentarily because uh, John is playing that A7 thing ascending and no doubt George probably practiced but he you know hesitates and he comes in on beat two and he goes down when he should be going up and he plays and then he catches up and and goes down again and now he's he's with John so he goes up how he finishes and they left it in and it's, you know it's just rock and roll you know bravado it's great you kind of if you watch that first um uh performance on the rooftop you see they're looking at each other and and they know it's a mistake but you know that's rock and roll <laughs> uh i've put it all together in a sound like so you can see how all the parts fit together so now let's check that out Oh yeah. 
sunshine. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, everybody had a good year. Everybody let the hair down. Everybody put the socks up. Yeah, everybody put the food down. Oh yeah. you enjoy that like i always say learn both parts play along with my sounds like you'll get it just like the beatles if you'd like to drop me a line do so at mikepicelli.com that's where the charts and tabs for all my video lessons are available for uh, you to download and if you'd be so kind please subscribe to this channel that way i can see your comments on youtube so have fun playing this great old song and until next time i'm mike picelli thanks for hanging out with me <laughs>